Hello and welcome or welcome back. My name is Celine and this is the third episode of my knitting podcast. I'm in a very nitty chatty mood today. I mean, when am I not? But yeah, I'm very excited to be sitting down for this. When I started making YouTube videos in January, I just got so excited about editing the video and stuff that it took away a lot of time for my actual knitting, which is not what I want. So this past month, I made sure to focus my attention on the knitting and I got quite a lot done. I've got some nice finished objects. I got a lot of works in progress. I put myself on a yarn ban in the last video, <laughs> but I had to buy some more yarn. It was for an emergency. I still am strongly committed to the yarn ban. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about those later on, but now I'm going to jump into my finished objects. The first one is a very special one. It is my own sweater pattern that I'm writing. It is nameless, so help a girl out and let me know if you have any name suggestions. I have been dreaming about this design for probably eight to nine months. I made my first sample, I think it was September last year. So this is a top-down seamless saddle shoulder construction sweater. It's entirely stockinette. There's no ribbing anywhere on this. I used a special technique to stop the stockinette from rolling on the cast on and all bind offs on the sleeves and the hem. It has this mock funnel neck, short rows to elevate the back of the neck. Obviously had to include bell sleeves. My favorite shape for sleeves is just so magical and majestic, which are longer than the body, but this is by no means cropped. I still tuck this into my high-waisted jeans and it goes way past my belly button. What I wanted to achieve with this garment was have no visible seams, no visible increases, ribbing, raglan lines. From the front, it's just plain stockinette. I want knitters to have to look twice before they understand how it's constructed. This is going to be hard to explain, but I wanted it to look as if I had gotten two bits of stockinette fabric, cut out the shape of the sweater for the front, cut out the shape of the sweater for the back, and then seamed them together on the sides. And I think that idea comes through. In fact, the seaming is at the side of the neck with this line that trails down the top of the shoulder and waterfalls into this triangular sleeve cap. I mean, with this fluffy yarn, you can barely see the seams anyway. I don't know why this cut is quite high fashion to my eyes. This neckline really elevates the look and makes it really elegant. It is really cozy to be wearing oversized bell sleeves. I was very demotivated by the first sample I made, but this one really meets my vision for this design. One thing that I didn't like about the first sample I made was the ratio between the sleeve and body width. Here it is. I knit this on 10 millimeter needles, whereas the final pattern you knit it on five and a half. So quite big difference in the gauge, but I think this gauge just suits the design better. I used Drops Wish for this, which is just not my favorite. It makes it look super cheap. I also had an included short rows, but you can see that similar saddle shoulder construction. And yeah, when I made this, I was kind of discouraged because I really did not like the look of it on, but I let a few months pass and then I gave it another go and I am so so happy with it. I love it so much. I'm also so chuffed with the yarn I used for this, which was kindly sponsored by the beautiful Knitter's Yarn Shop in London. This is the Isir Eco Soft in the shade E8S. It's 56% alpaca and 44% cotton. The yarn strand is constructed where there's a white cotton netting with the brown alpaca blown throughout it. And it creates this beautiful and quite subdued melange effect. Because there is no ribbing for the double stitch in the short rows to hide under. Fluffy yarn is just perfect for those double stitches, you just can't see them. I ended up using seven skeins for this size small, which works up at £52.50, which is, for the quality of this yarn, a super affordable sweater. It's very fluffy, organic, and rustic looking without it being itchy. Because of that cotton content, it does mean that it is slightly more breathable than the average wool jumper, but it is definitely a warm one, especially because of the high neck. Also with this one, I wanted to advocate for the color brown. I feel like it's neglected, not used enough. It is so beautiful for autumn. I'm telling you, if you show up with an entirely brown monochromatic outfit, I guarantee you will get compliments. It is super elegant, surprisingly to me, unusual. Not a lot of people go for it, but it's still neutral, so it's nothing too daring. But yeah, good vibes from an all brown outfit. I didn't have any brown sweaters, so this is her and I love it. Now, talking about the release dates for this pattern, realistically, I'm gonna say it's gonna take just over two months because I want to adjust some of the short rows. Then I have to do the grading, then I have to get it tech edited and then tested. But then 
I'm kind of met with the issue that it's going to be too warm. It's already a bit too warm for this. Do you guys think June is just not the right time for me to release a winter sweater pattern? Let me know what you think on that. Or also let me know if you live in the Southern Hemisphere because in that case, that would be the perfect time to release this. Eventually I'm gonna do a tester call. So make sure you follow me on my Instagram to be on the lookout for that if you are interested in testing this. So yeah, I'm very chuffed to be sharing this with you. Next, the yarn for this next finished object I showed in my previous vlog. I went to the Fiordilana yarn shop in Italy and I bought two skeins of the Rowan Creative Linen, which is 50% cotton and 50% linen. My plan with it was to make a ranunculus and that's exactly what I did. I bought the pattern for the ranunculus months and months ago because everyone has just been raving about it so much. Every single person that makes a ranunculus makes more than one. So I had to try it for myself and I do have to admit it's amazing. So this is my ranunculus. It's in this beautiful olive color. Please disregard this end that I've not weaved in, but I've left it in because I wanna put a little tag so I know which one's the back and which one's the front. Obviously it has the iconic ranunculus yoke, which might not be everyone's cup of tea, especially if you're more into a modern look. It is definitely more of that traditional classical knitted look, which I think is what gives charm to this design. It is quite grandma core but somehow to me it still looks quite fresh and super girly with the lace the thing with this one is that it is so enjoyable to knit that your perception is skewed and then you think it's the most beautiful thing you've ever made even though maybe it might not even be <laughs> i don't think i've made a garment that was more fun than this i made this in three days it's so fast it's so satisfying you get instant gratification with this for the yoke every single round is different the only non-fun part of this was weaving in the ends since it is quite an open gauge it is hard to hide them so my recommendation to you is to only start the new skin of yarn below the arm so on the side of the body so it's just not as visible but either way make sure you take your time weaving in the ends because you still want it to look nice and neat it's the first time i did short rows both at the front and the back which i thought was quite interesting you barely need any yarn i used two skeins of that creative linen so that was 400 meters i made the smallest size which was my initial intention i bought 400 meters which is intended for the smallest size but for some reason I forgot about that detail in the beginning so when I casted it on my idea was to go for the third size this pattern is known for the insane amount of positive ease I think the models on the pattern are wearing like 45 centimeters of positive ease and that's the look I wanted to go for so the lace of the yoke is knitted the same for every single size I had knitted up to here with the third size in mind. And then I measured my gauge. It was 13 stitches, which the pattern suggests 14. So I already know that mine was gonna be bigger. And then I thought, it's cotton. I'm knitting it super loosely. It's probably gonna stretch immensely with blocking. So with those considerations in mind, I went for the smaller size, which thank God I did because I wouldn't have had enough yarn anyway. I don't know why I didn't include it in my calculations. Also, no, I didn't make a gauge swatch. I usually do do gauge swatches, but with this one, since there was like the immense positive ease, I didn't mind if it was a bit off. I ran out of yarn 10 stitches before the end. I was doing my bind off and then I was left with 10 stitches. I tried to finish that bind off with the loose ends I had cut off, but it turned out horrible. So I unraveled the bind off. I think I unraveled an extra like 20 stitches or so. And then I began the bind off from there, also using a smaller needle. It also meant that the bottom was a bit less flared, which I think works because it is still quite flared with the smaller needle. But yes, I used every single little bit of yarn I had. I love that the pattern includes the instructions both for short sleeves and long sleeves. You also can decide what neck edge you want. So they have a tighter, smaller neck opening, whereas I went for more of the boat neck one. Also the pattern includes a twisted rib hem, but I decided to just cast off the same way I did the sleeves. I thought that would tie it in a bit better. And I just wasn't obsessed with the look of the twisted rib on such large gauge. I think it's quite cute done this way. But yeah, I just cannot emphasize how much fun I had making this yoke. Something extremely iconic about the ranunculus pattern is that you can knit it on any yarn, starting from lace up to worsted weight. Either way, you knit it on a six millimeter needle to obtain your own version of the ranunculus. And all this means that you can create such different ranunculuses using different yarns and you're not constricted to that gauge. That's also why the pattern doesn't say which sizes fit the different bus circumferences because you can really decide depending on what fiber you're using or depending how much positive ease you want. There's not really a recommended way it should be. 
The fact that I knitted this DK weight yarn with a six millimeter needle means that I have this beautiful drape, which I love. Just a little bit more about this yarn. I was really scared that it was going to grow a lot. Cotton usually does grow when you wash it, but I find that it didn't really grow that much, which is good. I'm always pleased when the pre-blocking measurements are true to size to what the post-blocking measurements are going to be. I love linen, so I'm very happy that there's linen content in here. The only problem with linen is that it creases a lot. I'm not sure how this is going to behave once it's stored. This is fresh off the blocking mat, so I've not put it in my drawer yet. Someone in my comments recommended I store my knits rolled, and that's actually helped massively in avoiding the creases. So hopefully the rolling is linen proof. But yes, generally I recommend this pattern so much. Please knit it. If it's not your thing, find someone you can knit it for because you will have so much fun and it's also such a quick project. You can do this in three days. Two, if you're a bit crazy. So that was my ranunculus. Sorry that the shot just changed, but my camera was having a tantrum. So on to the next project. You won't believe that I'm saying this. I am a huge petite knit fan, like huge, but I am so tired of Sophie scarves. <laughs> I've just seen too many. I've made three Sophie scarves. I just can't do it anymore. So I tried another Sophie scarf. Uh, what? So I've tried a different mini scarf, one that I've been eyeing for maybe a year. It's the chain scarf by Nitharina. It's got this beautiful twisted mock cable chain pattern throughout it and it is so gorgeous. I love the shape of the ends. It's so swoopy. The only downside of this design for me is that it has a wrong side which isn't as pretty as the right side but that's okay. Also, the thing with mini scarves is that once you wrap them around your neck, it's only important for the ties to look really cute. Whatever sits on your neck is kind of scrunched up anyway, so you won't really notice if it's sitting on the wrong or the right side. This one is more enjoyable to knit than the Sophie scarf, in my opinion, just because you don't have to increase every eight rows. You only do the increases at the beginning, but once you've reached that width, it's literally straight knitting. All throughout. Granted this is twisted rib so some may argue that it is a bit boring to knit which I guess it just depends on how you feel about twisted rib. You do have the mock cable row that kind of breaks the monotony and I think helps you to notice more of the progress. So this pattern is fully written in charts. I found them really simple to understand. I used the recommended yarn which was 25 grams of Cardiff Cashmere Classic so that's one skein. I wasn't able to follow the amount of repeats that the designer recommends for the length. I just knitted knitted until I thought I had enough left to make this decreasing section which meant that my scarf is a bit shorter than what's recommended but I can get it around my neck and tie it once with no issues. This is what I generally do with mini scarves anyway. I kind of tweak the length of it depending on how much yarn I have, depending on how wide I want it. With petite knits Sophie scarf I never followed the amount of repeats. I always just kind of worked with what I had and yeah obviously cashmere is incredible, luxurious. It's the best thing that you could ever put on your neck. I'm also so happy I finally have a red mini scarf. I've just been wearing a lot of navy blue. I got a new yellow coat, so I think red is absolutely perfect for that. In fact, I wore that very outfit yesterday. I was also thinking I want to start wearing it in my hair. So as a tie, potentially also as a little headband, I think it would be so adorable. I just have to find a way to fix it on. I feel like it would just slide off. I'll figure it out. I also love wearing it untied like that. Obviously, it doesn't work with this outfit because this jacket has a collar and stuff, but it's really lovely draped at the front like that. And it's also a nice way to showcase the lovely stitch. But yeah, once again, I want to emphasize on the swoop of the end. I think it's so gorgeous when you tie up. It creates the loveliest little bow. It's quite cartoon-like. I really recommend this pattern and I think mini scarves are a lovely excuse to treat yourself to one skein of cashmere. And yeah, I love it. It's so beautiful. Also, quick knit. We love a quick knit. That's my chain scarf. So those are my finished objects. I'm now moving on to works in progress, which I've got, I think, too many for my liking. I'm not gonna lie, they're giving me a little bit of anxiety. So coming off of a relatively good first designing experience with my brown sweater, I got really excited to begin my second design. I've shown you the yarn in my previous podcast and it is the Noro Compeito and I have begun the garment. This is her. I don't know if you can tell but this is quite a simple raglan. My vision with this was to create a super fun, super oversized tee 
which this is not much of that yet just because it's only the yolk obviously the yarn steals the show it's absolutely incredible so fun it reminds me of like preschool crayon vibes it's this grayish white base with the rainbow scattered throughout it and it's painted in a way that really reminds me how i just hit myself with um my needle it's just painted in a way that really reminds me of a little crayon drawing i thought this design was gonna be so simple but i'm just giving myself so many issues the first time I casted this on. I went straight into the raglan. I hadn't done the neck edge. I began the German short rows right away. I did all my short rows, probably took like four hours or something. And then when I had completed them and I had to do my first full round, my stitches were twisted. That has never happened to me. But here's the thing. When I noticed this issue, it was like 1 a.m. So whatever. I unravel the whole thing and then before going to sleep I am going through my camera roll and I had taken one photo of the project while I was knitting it and I honestly don't see any twisting so I think I unraveled it for no reason in any case I knit all of this back up and I now have to unravel it my collar construction was such a flop first of all it's too high up on the neck i want more of a scoopy neck also the way i went on about it just doesn't make any sense i cast it on the stitches and then went straight into the raglan and then later i picked up for the neck edge i just picked up the stitches for the neck in the stitches that already existed there were no rows that i was meant to pick up the neck stitches from picking up stitches for the neck edge would make sense in a drop shoulder construction where you're maybe you know casting on for the back knitting a bit of the back then picking up stitches for the shoulders and then shaping the neckline and once that's done then you pick up the stitches to make the neck edge but in this situation it serves absolutely no purpose i understood quite a lot making this i'm hopeful that my next try is going to be successful i don't think having to unravel this will be too painful just because i'm so motivated and encouraged to see a finished garment in this beautiful fun yarn i haven't worked on this in about five days and i always joke i have short-term memory loss so unraveling this hopefully won't feel like i'm undoing 10 hours of my work also, I'm really excited to see this design knitted up. It is quite simple, but I think it's gonna be really, really cool. And I know I'm gonna wanna reach out for this during the summer all the time. I think it will look so cool with just, you know, a pair of wide-legged jeans and some fun, bright shoes. You can pair any color with this. That's what's so fun. What's really nice about the Noro is that the ply is not even. There are some sections of the strand that are a bit thicker, some are a bit thinner. And I love that because it gives more of a hand spun yarn look, which I've been really into the look of lately. It has happened once that I got to a point in the yarn strand where it was so thin, I feared it wasn't gonna hold. So I just broke that off. I was just a bit worried because the way the Noro yarns are plied, they're just really easy to break off. I break this off with my hands. I don't use any scissors. Give you a little demonstration. So yeah, that was just a little thing. It only happened once. Despite all the issues that this garment has given me so far, I am pleased that the grading is already looking so much easier than my brown sweater. So I think it will be hopefully more of a smooth sailing process. And I'm pretty positive I'll be able to release this in time for the summer. So be on the lookout for that test call as well. This yarn was once again, really kindly sponsored by the beautiful Knitters Yarn Shop in London. It is so amazing to be working with such amazing people that have also become my friends it's just a great time an objective i'll set for myself is this will have to have a name by the next episode of the podcast the next work in progress is on my blocking mat and it's dry so i can remove it so this one is a crochet project i do crochet every now and again i think one of the reasons i enjoy knitting particularly is that i don't necessarily have to look at my work especially if i'm doing stockinette so that means i can watch tv or YouTube, you know? But that just means that when I do start a crochet project, it's just so fun because I don't do it all the time. It just feels like an extra special project. Obviously, this is just a little rectangle of this flowery crochet goodness, but it's going to be the Sweet Bay Cardigan by Moonchain. I'm testing this pattern for Amanda and it's my second test for her, which I'm so grateful. I love, love her designs and she's such a beautiful human. It's always an honor when she asks me to help her out. The Sweet Fay is a cropped tie closure cardi in this beautiful floral lace. Now, you know how I said it's meant to be cropped? This is the back panel. I have 
no idea why I made it this long. I'm obviously going to have to unravel like 10 centimeters because it's just too long. I don't know what I was thinking, but fortunately it's crochet. So unraveling that is going to be very simple and pain free. But yeah, there's not much I can say about this. It's just so gorgeous. Like look at this beautiful floral motif. When I saw the pattern in this, I don't know why I expected it to be simple, but it is quite complicated. There's just a lot of different rows. Obviously you get the hang of it, but it is quite complicated. I mean, fair enough. It's just so beautiful. It would be a bit too good to be true if it were easy to make. The thing I love about Amanda's patterns is that they stay so true to her aesthetic. It's just actually quite crazy. You would recognize a moon chain pattern out of a million. And I think that says a lot about the design. This works up relatively fast. Obviously crochet uses quite a lot of yarn so you probably need more than you think which takes me to why I had to buy more yarn. Despite being on a yarn ban I ran out of yarn so I had to buy more and since I'm testing this and I have a deadline I couldn't wait so I think I'm excused. Oh actually I'm about to run out of yarn. I still have this much left. I started my front panel. Look at what the stitch looks like post and pre-blocking. I don't know why I made this so narrow, so I had to stretch this for it to reach my shoulder to shoulder measurement. I'm using silk, which stretches a lot, so that worked out fine in the end, fortunately. I'm using the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the shade Putty. So all of this is obviously one skein with the back panel and the bit that I have left. So I bought another two skeins of the Knitting for Olive. This yarn is one that I've used multiple times. I think I made like four garments in this one, but this is the first time I use it for crocheting, which was quite interesting. Is it worth it using silk instead of cotton? Obviously silk is way more expensive than cotton, but ultimately I think I'm going to be able to judge it once I start wearing it, see how it feels on my skin and see if all those silk characteristics shine through despite it being crocheted up. I mean for now I think it's really lovely, I think it has a really really nice drape, I think it blocked out very well. One thing that I'm sure of is that these treble crochet clusters work really well with silk. I feel like with cotton these could turn out quite stiff whereas the silk is just super drapey and soft. So that probably is a really big advantage of this. It would be interesting to maybe knit up a sample using cotton and see how that would have worked up. I think the hesitation simply comes from me never having heard of anyone crocheting with silk. So far it's proving to be really nice. I'm glad I'm experimenting with this. This pattern is made to measure so it is 500% size inclusive which is amazing and it is the most beautiful, girly, ethereal little cardi for the summer. This will be so lovely as a swimsuit cover-up or for an evening walk on the beach or an evening stroll on the seaside promenade. I cannot wait to show you the finished garment in my next podcast. Before I show you the final work in progress, I wanted to mention that I still have my honey bucket bag that I've not touched since the last podcast. So I'm not gonna show it to you because I've made absolutely zero progress on it, but it's still on the needles. Still giving me anxiety for that brioche. I've still not sat down to work it out because because I've been too scared and I've been procrastinating working on my other stuff. But anyways, the final work in progress I'm sharing is the Northland sweater. I am facing the boyfriend sweater curse with this one. It's the second time I knit this pattern. I've knit it for my brother before, exactly this time last year. Last year it was giving me many issues. I messed up the gauge, so it just took me an overall long time to make it. Whereas this, I started on Friday and it's Sunday, so it's gonna be a breeze. It's a worsted weight gauge. I think it's 17 stitches in 10 centimeters, and it works up so fast, you guys. It's such a breeze. If you decide to make this one, make sure you do do a gauge swatch. I always have to go up a needle size when I'm knitting petite knit. Usually it's only half a millimeter, but with this one it's a whole entire millimeter, which is why I'm recommending you check your gauge, because I feel like petite knit was knitting particularly loosely for this one, but maybe it's just me. This sweater is also a top-down saddle shoulder construction. In this case, the saddle shoulder is quite wide because it has this nice thick band running across the top of the shoulder. We have our triangular sleeve caps. This one is constructed where you begin flat and then you shape the neckline and you make increases and then you join in the round at the front here and you later pick up for the ribbing. I'm making a size extra large because we are going for an extra oversized look. I love this color. We picked this beautiful burgundy. It just looks incredible with navy, first of all. Also, if you're into something more funky, look how nice it looks 
on pastel yellow. This is just a yellow dress, but it's just to show you the color. Very unusual pairing. I don't see this a lot, but I absolutely love it. And I'm 100% going to make myself something in this shade at some point. I love this design, which is obviously why I made it a second time. It puckers out in this section a little bit, but I know that goes away with blocking. I had the same thing happen on my brother's one. So don't fear if you have those on yours. I really love this thick band detail on the shoulder in case you're interested in a women's pattern that has this characteristic. I know my favorite things knitwear has definitely a tee, maybe a sweater as well. I'll put the number of it on the screen. And this leads me to my second yarn acquisition, which is for this project. This one's knitted up in one strand of the Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in the shade Bordeaux. And I had to get it now because I have to meet a deadline. This is for my boyfriend's birthday. So that's why I bought that. It's the first time I'm knitting with one strand of the heavy merino. I've made a garment using two strands of it and that was a total vibe, but I'm loving the fabric that one strand of this creates. It is very rustic feeling, but there's some sort of buttery element to it and I feel like the strand is extremely porous so it is quite light and it's as if the air incorporated in the strand is what makes this rustic yarn feel quite buttery and soft. This is a yarn that pairs really well on metal needles I find. It's just so satisfying. For the extra large I bought nine skeins and just as a reference to make what I've knit so far I've used just over two skeins and that is it for my works in progress. So since this video doesn't really have a proper yarn acquisition section and also I'm not ready to leave you I still want to talk about knitting. I asked you guys on Instagram what you'd be interested in seeing on my podcast other than the usual stuff. Someone actually reminded me that I've not shown YouTube my newest knitting journal. I was watching one of my favorite podcasters Alexandra's Garn. If you're into those podcasts where you feel like you're hanging out with a friend watch Alexandra's Garn. She's so funny for her everything I knit in 2023 video. She flipped through her knitting journal. So I bought this little notebook from Legami, which is my favorite Italian stationery brand. What I did, I printed out the photos of my projects, so the ones that you also see on Instagram, and I stuck them on there, gave a little title, and then I include the designer, the yarn, the time it took me to make it, and the size that I went for. I just wanted a little photo album of my projects that I'm making during the year. This is also a very realistic journal where it doesn't require a lot of effort and I feel like I can keep up with it. Or it's also quite easy to update way after you've done the project just in case you've just not gotten around to it. But yeah, that's literally it. It's nothing crazy, nothing special. I definitely recommend you watch Alexandra's videos though. It's a thousand percent inspired by her journal. She has also other little sections in her notebook that are way more organic or way more fun than this. I'm very excited to use this for 2024's Everything I Knit video. Oh my goodness, if you do have a knitting journal already and would like to share some pages with me on my Instagram, please do. I love that sort of thing. I was really into journaling when I was younger. I used to watch Plan With Me videos specifically for the Erin Condren planner. I forced my poor dad to buy me an Erin Condren planner from the US and the shipping was so expensive. I mean, the planner was really expensive. Thank you, dad, for buying me that planner. I mean, that planner, was all I existed for, for like two years of my life. I'm going off track. So that was my knitting journal. Someone else asked me what my favorite spring and summer yarns are. I hate to be repeating myself, but the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk is one of my favorites for loose fitting garments. It is perfect for a summer t-shirt. It is also good for a loose fitting camisole, nothing that's tight and fitted to the body. I feel like the stretch of silk doesn't pair well with that, so make sure you use it for something super loose and drapey. Also, if you're making a camisole, account for the stretch that the straps will experience. Another one of my favorites is one-stranded mohair garments. This, for example, is the Aura Top by Rose Knitwear. I knitted this on six millimeter needles with one strand of the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair, and it creates this gorgeous veil which is perfect for spring or summer evenings. I think my favorite mohairs I've tried is either the Sezia Vivian or the Isir Silk Mohair. Those ones are so soft. I've heard that the Earth Yarns Mohair is really lovely because it has a higher percentage of silk than usual. But yeah, for spring and summer, anything that's knitted with one strand of mohair in a really loose gauge. I mean, 
Isn't that drape gorgeous? If you have any spring or summer yarn recommendations, please share them down below. I would love to find out about new yarns. Lastly, someone asked if there's anything, any tips or any advice that I wish I knew before I started knitting. Now, before I go into my answer, I think it's a lovely thing to discuss in the comments. So please let me know what's your take on this. My main point is to watch knitting podcasts, especially those people that go really in depth with the technical sides of things. As soon as I begun, I started learning so many things and it's such a great source of inspiration for what garments you should knit next. Unfortunately, in this world, not everyone knits, so it's hard to find knitting friends, especially in the beginning. And I think podcasts are the closest thing to a knitting friend. Another thing I wish I knew before I started knitting is it's not worth it to go overboard with a cheap yarn. Yarn can obviously be so expensive, so this is a bit of a tricky point to make. Cheap yarn was just so easy to access, so easy to order, so quick, so this, so that. But I personally know that I went overboard with the cheap yarn. You know, I would buy the cheap yarn even though I had no plans for it. I definitely regret it because I have a lot of really nice garments just knitted in the wrong yarn. Also, I still have some of that really cheap yarn that I bought in the very beginning three years ago and I still haven't used it, you know? But you live and you learn. Those are just a couple of things that I would recommend my pre-knitting self. I think I could make a whole entire video of things I wish I knew before I started knitting but please let me know what you wish you knew before you started knitting or crocheting or sewing I think that would be super helpful to anyone who's just starting out and maybe watching this video and kind of testing the waters and yes guys that was it for the third episode of my knitting podcast I will leave my Instagram on the screen in case you'd like to follow my creations more in real time and as always I thank you so much for sticking till the end of the video and I cannot wait to see you in the next one